Hello, and welcome to the National Agricultural Library's Creating a Data Management Plan webinar. My name is Erin Antonoli, NAL's Knowledge Services Metadata Librarian, and I will be presenting this webinar today. Also with me are John Sears, Ag Data Commons Data Scientist, and Cindy Parr, Project Lead for the Ag Data Commons, who will both help answer questions during the QA portion of the webinar. We will begin by explaining what a data management plan is and why it is important to create one, review the core components of a data management plan, at which time we will also look at a real data management plan or DMP's implementation of these components and conclude with time for questions. First, we should start out with an explanation of what a data management plan is and conversely point out what a data management plan is not. Your data management plan should cover the basic guidelines for dealing with the data that you will produce over its entire life cycle. This will take the form of a brief outline that covers the who, what, when, where, and sometimes the how in terms of management and preservation protocol for your data. This document should be very easy for someone who is not familiar with your project to understand. Be clear and concise. A data management plan is not an in-depth documentation of your protocol. You don't need to include workflows, instructions, charts, diagrams, the names of every person or company who will interact with the project, or in-depth review guidelines. You do need these in-depth project management tools for internal operation and use. But this data management plan is meant to be a brief overview with a very specific purpose. In that vein, this plan is not the end of the conversation about data management, but rather the beginning. You should expect to revisit this plan and flesh out your protocol and workflow procedures after your funding comes through and you are ready to begin your research. Finally, a data management plan is not concerned with paper or manuscript publication or promotion strategy. This plan concerns only the data, and all points should address data management. Of course, there are always exceptions, especially if a funder requests information about a certain topic or activity. An exception might be if data storage is bundled with paper publication in which case you should note that in the appropriate section. Also to note, if you are depositing your data in one location but cataloging it in another, such as Ag Data Commons, you should be specific with regard to who is responsible pr for preserving the data and who is providing access. When we refer to the data life cycle, this graphic from Data One's Education Module Series, which can be found at the link in the lower left, visualizes this process. Managing data is an ongoing process, and a good plan is a crucial step to ensure your data is handled properly. We are focusing on the plan portion of the life cycle in this webinar, which incidentally takes into account all the other steps of the life cycle which we will look at now. There are many reasons why a solid data management plan is important. Data are valuable and often unique assets that should be properly managed in order to be accessible, understandable, and reusable into the future. Sometimes referred to as the Force 11 Open Data FAIR principles, the goal of a DMP is to form a blueprint to follow in order to make data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. FAIR is mostly applicable to the steps after data are released, whereas DMPs also cover the part of the cycle before the data are released. So, the DMP ensures the data are kept safe and understandable both during and after projects. The guidelines we will present in this webinar follow U.S. federal public access and open data directives and also comply with a broad range of current funding agency requirements for DMPs. In other words, DMPs may be more work on the front end, but a well-thought-out plan will save you lots of time, money, and headaches throughout the life cycle of the data. 
Before you create a new DMP, researchers should determine if a DMP specific to their organization or previous projects already exists. If a DMP does not exist, follow guidelines already in place to create yours. Don't reinvent the wheel. Note that current guidelines for NIFA are two pages in addition to the project proposal, which we will examine more closely during this presentation. Also note that USDA Public Access Implementation Plan, most research data generated with USDA funding, will be required to be cataloged in the Ag Data Commons. This means that whether data is deposited directly in the Ag Data Commons or linked from another repository, a record for that data must exist in the Ag Data Commons. If you determine that you must create a DMP, follow this outline that can be found in more detail on the NAL Knowledge Services page linked at the top of the slide in conjunction with your agency's guidelines to ensure you are covering the necessary components. Here you see the main components of a data management plan. We will review each component and give examples of what types of information belong in each section. These guidelines and other data management resources can be found on NAL's website under the Knowledge Services section linked in the bottom right of the display, and more resources will be linked at the end of the presentation. We begin our plan by outlining expected data types. This section covers what you will produce. Describe the type of data for example, digital or non-digital, and how they will be generated. Different methods include lab work, field work, surveys, custom software, and so on, that should be specified. What kind of metadata will be generated, and how? Will metadata be manually entered or automatically generated by the data collection method? Following a specific community-approved metadata standard consistently is encouraged to facilitate wider understanding and reuse of the data, and the specifics of the standards used will be covered in the next section. For example, you may be collecting environmental data from real-time sensors or images from phenocams. You may be conducting interviews with digital video and audio recordings and subsequent digital transcriptions. You may have field notebooks from crop management experiments or field trials that are not born digital. You may be generating sequence data for whole genomes or metagenomics. In the course of analysis or modeling, you may be creating customized computer code or scripts for transformation or data cleaning. Metadata describing the data you have collected should be recorded for each experiment each physical sample, or be embedded in the files produced by the sensors or sequencing machines. Describe whether any raw or processed data will be reused from other studies, and if so, name the anticipated sources. This is a screenshot of a DMP with a fairly comprehensive expected data type section. This project gathered genetic data in multiple physical formats and states that they will arrange the resulting data in an Excel file. We will follow this example throughout the presentation and link to this data management plan at the bottom of the display where it is shown throughout the presentation. Next, the data formats and standards section revolves around the data and metadata formats and schemas chosen for the project. Describe the data formats, for example, CSV, PDF, DOC, TIFF, and so on, for both raw and processed data. If data are in a non-digital format, are there plans to digitize the data? Use of machine-readable formats is strongly encouraged and will soon be required by most U.S. federal funding agencies. To make data more machine-readable, consider using CSV in place of Microsoft Excel or text in place of Microsoft Word. 
The nature of your data will determine if this shift is possible, but planning a structure from the beginning of a project makes it easier to arrange your data to comply with these formats. On an aside, we plan to offer a webinar at some point about the do's and don'ts of formatting data to be, be machine readable, so keep an eye out for that in our monthly webinar schedule. What standards or schemas will be used to structure, store, or share the data and metadata? Community, recognized, and non-proprietary standards are strongly encouraged. Be specific when noting this information. Name and link to any published data dictionaries, data standards, or ontologies that you are using. Examples include ICASA Master Variable List or Integrated Taxonomic Information System. If data will be deposited in professional databases or repositories, refer to their data and metadata standards. There are many examples of data standards and formats on the Data Management Guidelines planning page. Following the same DMP as before, we see their Data Formats and Standards section. This project notes all the file formats data will be stored in. This is genetic data, and the FASTA format is a community standard for storing this type of research. Note they specify formats for sequence files, text files, and image files, and note how they are saving their methods for replication in addition to the data they are generating. Anyone using this data later will know exactly what to expect when they open the file packages. The Data Storage and Preservation of Access section revolves around provisions for depositing in a trusted long-term preservation and archiving environment. This includes backups, cloud storage, access protocols, obsolescence avoidance, data migration strategy, and so on. Where will the data be stored during and after the life of the project? Name specific workspaces and repositories and link to them as appropriate. For example, you may initially manage data on a local or network hard drive and then transfer it to a repository such as the Ag Data Commons for long-term access and preservation. You may maintain it on a high-speed computing platform such as Cynet or Cyverse or on a shared workspace like Open Science Framework during analysis. You may deposit it in Dryad or an institutional repository, for example, Purdue University Research Repository, or you may maintain it using your own infrastructure beyond the life of the project. What is the technical infrastructure and staff expertise? How and why are they qualified to preserve the data? Funders want to know that competent people with adequate arrangement are in charge of maintaining the data. This is especially important information to include if researchers are publishing data using their own infrastructure. Also in the Data Storage and Preservation of Access section, specify plans for long-term preservation. Some items to address include approximately how much data are expected to be archived. Ideally, this includes raw data and or minimally processed data. What is the planned retention period for the data? Outline strategies, tools, and contingency plans that will be used to avoid data loss, degradation, or damage. The DMP we are following records methods for storing and preserving their original source material, which is in a physical form, and also specifies where the digital data will be deposited. In this case, they are submitting their data to GenBank for public access, which outsources much of the long-term access issues. They have also specified who will be responsible for maintaining data backup and preservation long-term. In this case, the overseer of the lab, a position rather than a named individual, is responsible for maintaining the infrastructure and workflow.
The data sharing and public access section explains any restrictions, embargo periods, license, or public access level. Data generated by federal employees has either U.S. Public Domain or Creative Commons CC0 status, while federally funded data and non-federal data may vary depending on funder requirements. Describe your data access and sharing procedures during and after the data collection process. For example, publication or public release. Name specific repositories, databases, and catalogs as appropriate. For example, data may be shared by publishing on Dryad or in a genomic database, or open source code can be shared in a public code repository such as GitHub, but should also be cataloged in the Ag Data Commons if funded by USDA. Outline restrictions such as copyright, proprietary, and company secrets, confidentiality, patent appropriate credit, disclaimers, or conditions for use of the data. Limiting distribution of data to a project or personal website only is strongly discouraged and grant panels probably won't be impressed. Similarly, in most cases, it is insufficient to make data available only on request. Depositing data in a trusted or certified long-term preservation and archiving environment is preferred and may be required by many journals before articles are published. Indicate how you will ensure that appropriate funding project numbers will be acknowledged with the data. For example, CRIS numbers, such as NIFA award numbers or ARS project numbers, should be noted in a consistent way. As we reach the bottom of the first page of the DMP we are following, we see there are no restrictions placed on the data. Because this is federally funded, this is the default expectation. However, if your project has multiple funding sources or other contingencies, note those as needed. The only thing I would change here is to add the distribution method of the data. This plan indicated GenBank in the previous section about storage and preservation, and if that is the repository also planned for making the data accessible, they should note this here as well. The Roles and Responsibilities section provides information about project team members and tasks associated with data management activities over the course of the project. State who will be primarily responsible to ensure DMP implementation. This particularly is important for multi-investigator and multi-institutional projects. Define key roles of the data management team. This is especially appropriate for large-scale projects. Identify who will perform which tasks. Will graduate students or postdocs or technicians have day-to-day -day responsibility along with their research roles, or is there a full-time data manager or database administrator? Provide a contingency plan in case key personnel leave the project. For example, if data are managed individually or collaboratively on a platform such as ARS SciNet and an investigator leaves, who becomes responsible for the data? What resources are needed to carry out the DMP? If funds are needed, have they been added to the budget request and budget narrative? Projects must budget for sufficient resources to implement the proposed DMP. For example, there may be data publication charges, data storage charges, or salary for data managers. At the top of the second page of our sample DMP, we see the roles and responsibilities clearly outlined. They specify the platform they will use to transfer data from their lab to collaborators, and again, note that they are outsourcing their access responsibilities to GenBank. Also noted is who will submit what portions of the project to GenBank. 
The Monitoring and Reporting section contains information on how the researcher plans to monitor and report on implementation of the DMP during and after the project, as required by the funder. This may include progress in data sharing, including publications, database, software, and so on, among other information. The plan should also indicate who is responsible for this duty. Cataloging everything in Ag Data Commons should help researchers easily pull together a list of data products shared from a particular project. The DMP concludes with information about specifics of the monitoring and reporting. While it is good that it specifies principal investigators are responsible for reviewing and revising the DMP, a link to information about the specifics of NIFA's monitoring protocol and requirements would be welcome. Always be specific when referencing a policy that you plan to use. As you can see, the entire DMP is under two pages. Creating a DMP does not have to be a labor-intensive task, but it does force you to think about your project and make sure you are planning for contingencies of data gathering and formatting, access, preservation, and future use. Consider the DMP like you would a roadmap to help you stay on track. Your library may offer a one-on-one -on -one consultation service. If so, take advantage of the help they offer. NAO will also review draft plans subject to our capacity and priorities. Send the DMP draft and a project summary draft to nal-adc-curator at ars.usda.gov. We will provide both general review and, where possible, discipline-specific review. We will propose improvements, but you are ultimately responsible for final decisions on the content. That being said, please plan ahead. We require at least five business days to complete this review process. We are looking for examples of good DMPs to share on our website. Please note that policies and process are dynamic and we are open to changing our guidance. We welcome your feedback to improve this process. In summary, DMPs are an important part of the data life cycle. They save time and effort in the long run and ensure the data are relevant and useful in the future. Funders, journals, and institutions are beginning to mandate data management plans, so it is important for scientists to understand what a DMP entails. So, as you plan your next project and get ready to write your DMP, consider the expected data types, data formats and standards, data storage and preservation of access, data sharing and public access, roles and responsibilities, and monitoring and reporting. And keep in mind that NAL is here to help fine-tune your DMP draft to make sure it is the best it can be. Before we open up for questions, I want to share a few links that will help you complete your data management plans. The first link is NAL's Guidelines for Draft Management Resources page, which contains a data management plan guideline links to data management plans, and other resources to help you in composing your own DMP. dmptool.org can be found on NAL's data management resources page, but I'm highlighting it here as well because you can see samples of many types of real DMPs there, including the one we looked at throughout this webinar. Also included is the email to the Ag Data Commons Curator inbox if you have any questions for our team. And now we will open it up for questions.